Rachel from Minerva and today I'm going to take you through a roundup of our top 10 costuming patterns. So whether you have a costume party to attend or the kids have a play that they need a costume for, this video is going to have some inspiration for you to help you get started. Also, if you don't have any of those going on in your life, don't worry, because some of these costumes can definitely be worn in your everyday wardrobe. Now, there's a lovely little community online called the Costuming Community or History Bounding, and what that is is they incorporate costume into their everyday wardrobe in a really exciting and interesting way. So bear that one in mind as well as you watch, and maybe you'll see yourself going in a slightly different direction with your sewing. You never know. So without any further ado, I'm going to start with the masculine category, move into the feminine, and I'll finish with the kids. First up in the masculine category is this classic cowboy-esque duster coat and shirt pattern from McCall's. This is available in two size ranges, extra small to medium and large to extra large. These translate to chest measurements of 82 to 102 centimetres and 107 to 122 centimetres. Now I think this is a really great pattern with lots of nice little details that give it that Wild West feeling. View A is a pullover shirt which has a collar and button front panel. It features forward shoulders and is self-lined at the yoke, so that's lovely and easy right there. My favourite detail is the long sleeves with plaquette and button closure, which can of course be worn rolled up or down, depending on how respectable a cowboy you are. While this shirt is great, however, it's really all about view B, the duster coat. It features a collar and cape at the shoulders to keep the rain from soaking you to the skin while riding across the prairie. The large patch pockets are practical. You can keep all manner of things in there while the sleeves are constructed from two pieces and finished with a button tab at the cuff, ensuring plenty of room to manoeuvre in a life or death situation. In order to achieve maximum flare, the back is split into two halves joined by another buttoned tab. Each half has godets in search between the front and back pieces. The duster is ankle length, so the godets will help you achieve a billowing dramatic entrance when you need to next step into a Wild West bar and throw some punches. So I have quite a soft spot for hybrid Western genres. So space Western or something with a bit of a supernatural edge. But I do know that some people are very more into the straight laced Western. And with this pattern, you could go in either direction, I think, particularly as it's just down to the fabric choices. So the pattern recommends medium weight fabrics for the duster coat, denim, canvas, that kind of a thing. And here at Minerva we are quite big fans of the version on the pattern envelopes. So in order to recreate this we've got a few suggestions for you. So we think that the soft cotton duck canvas in cream is excellent for the duster coat, while this glades textured linen will make an excellent shirt in the ruby red and to capture some of that 1800s wild west cowboy aesthetic going on we recommend this paisley style for the neckerchief so what would you pick space cowboy or traditional let us know in the comments moving from the wild west to the fog-filled streets of london town is mccall's 2042, which is a really classic double-breasted greatcoat. This pattern is available in two size ranges, 38 to 44 and 46 to 52. So that's 97 centimetres to 112 centimetres and 117 to 132 centimetres at the chest. There are two versions of the pattern in the envelope. View A features a classic notched collar with neat lapels. The hip height Welton flat pockets are attractive and practical, perfect for keeping your magnifying glass in or your latest clue. The back is gathered and secured with a double button tab which creates a neat cinch at the waist before flaring out over the legs. The bottom back is split down the middle seam for ease of movement. View B is exactly the same as view A but with a contrast edge along the collar, lapels, button band, sleeve cuffs and bottom hem. 
I think that this coat is really beautiful. It has a chic tailored look to it and can easily be worn as your normal winter coat. It certainly wouldn't look out of place as you grab your morning commute coffee. It really is such a versatile pattern. For me, McCall's 2042 definitely screams Sherlock Holmes. Now, whether you are a Basil Rathbone fan like myself or prefer Benedict Cumberbatch to Robert Downey Jr., this costume can be easily made up to look like your favourite Holmes. We think that this pure wool herringbone twill will be perfect for the coat, especially because it has that very subtle brown check in it, and that's very similar to the coat worn by Benedict Cumberbatch on the TV show. If you wanted to make view B with that stylish contrast edge, we recommend this water repellent faux suede in navy blue. And then in order to complete the look, we recommend these antique gold buttons with embossed detailing, which will really pick up on those beautiful gold tones in the check, while also feeling very, very Victorian gentleman. And then that's it. You'll be ready to grab Deer Stalker and go looking for your next criminal and apprehend them. To conclude the masculine costumes is Simplicity 1039, which is more fantasy than history. Again, there are two pattern size ranges, 38 to 44, which is chest measurements 97 to 112 centimetres, and 46 to 52, which is 117 to 132 centimetres. This is a pattern for a two-piece suit comprising of a tailcoat and tapered trousers. They have this really great steampunk or gothic vibe to them. The tailcoat in view A sits at the natural waist and is shaped into an exaggerated waistcoat front at the bottom of the body. It features a notched collar, contrast lapels and contrast epaulets on the shoulders. The overlong sleeves reach past the wrists and are finished with a row of buttons at the forearm and contrast buckled straps at the cuffs. These details are mirrored on the coat front above and below the buttons. Finally, there is a contrast belt pocket that sits midway on the body, perfect for stowing your looking glass and a pocket watch. In view B, there is no collar and the labels are exaggerated in both depth and proportion, while the torso is cropped and features a straight hemline. The sleeves finish at the wrist and there are only two buttons for a closure. The tails at the back are the same length as in view A, but are shaped in a more a German expressionist, jagged manner. View B includes a pattern for a bat-shaped choker for that ultimate Halloween look. Both trouser views feature a button and fly closure and slim-fitting legs, which taper slightly at the ankles. I really like the steampunk edge that view A has going on for this pattern, and depending on your fabric choices, you can take it in a number of different stylistic um, or aesthetic directions. For example, I really like the steam goth version by Alan with the red and silver brocade, particularly those contrast cuffs, they're just fantastic. But growing up, you know, I, I was quite an alternate teen at heart, so I will always, always have a soft spot for the Nightmare Before Christmas and the Pumpkin King himself. And with that in mind, View B is my favourite. We at Minerva think that this linen viscous and charcoal with the very subtle lighter grey pinstripe is absolutely perfect for this pattern. It's a match made in gothy, gothy heaven. <laughs> this black liquid satin will make the perfect luxurious lining. You cannot skimp out on the lining when you are as important as Jack Skellington. So as looks as possible in my opinion. And we also think that this faux leather knit fabric will be quite easy to work with to make the absolutely fantastic oversized bat collar, um, which is so visually distinctive and will take it from a really nice pinstripe suit to Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas. You can also buy the diamantes for the eyes just to make them glitter with, with spooky intentions. So what are you waiting for? Release the inner pumpkin king and create your own holiday in this fantastic costume pattern.
Moving on to the feminine costumes now with McCall's 7141, which is a pattern for a school uniform. All of the individual garments included in this pattern can easily work with your day-to-day -day wardrobe, depending on your style, of course, but the two different blazers alone are wardrobe basics. The school uniform is a costume party staple as well as a cosplay staple and the envelope contains every variation you can imagine. There are two pattern size ranges. The first is size 6 to 14 which is bust measurement 78 centimeters to 92 centimeters. The second is 14 to 22 which is 92 centimeters to 112 centimeters. View A is an unlined semi-fitted blazer with notched collar and lapels, full length sleeves, bust darts and button closure. It sits just below the natural waistline. View B is the same but slightly longer and with the addition of patch pockets. View C is for a close fitting halter neck waistcoat that features an edgy double buckle closure. View D is a blouse inspired by sailor uniforms. It features a sailor's collar and tie rather than a stand collar, a mock button band and narrow hems. View E is more akin to the kind of shirt worn at my school. This is with a stand collar. Views F and G are the same pleated skirt with narrow waistband and side zipper, just in two different lengths. If you've ever been on a night out in the UK, then you'll know that the school disco is kind of a staple. You'll see loads of people with ties around their heads, pretty much as if they were still at school, actually. But you don't have to go to a party to use this costume. For Halloween, for example, you could go as one of the troublesome teens of St. Trinian's. Also, if Japanese manga and comics is more your thing and you like to attend conventions, then view D with the sailor blouse collar will easily turn into any kind of school uniform combination. So no matter your love, you can very easily um, represent your favourite. But... Why be a normal high schooler when you could just as easily be a super high schooler? Why not unleash some moon prison power and save the world from destruction and evil? So this Rose and Hubble cotton poplin is perfect because cotton poplin is what school shirts are made of. So you can have that in white and for the contrast bits on the collar as well. And then this cotton swirl in royal blue will complete the base outfit for Usagi Tsukinu, Sailor Moon herself. So just in order to really nail that costume, swap out the royal blue for some red to recreate her signature red bow at the uh, neck. And then don't forget to maybe create a bow for the back of the skirt as well. From superheroes to supervillains, Simplicity 8434 is the Batman villain Harley Quinn. This is another pattern that would be great for a convention. Like most patterns in this video, Simplicity 8434 comes in two size ranges. First is from the Mrs. range, sizes 10 to 18. This translates to a bust measurement of 82.5cm to 101.6cm. The second is the woman's range, more suitable for a fuller figure. The range starts at 20W and ends with 28W. That's 106.6cm to 127cm bust measurement. The pattern includes everything you see on the pattern envelope, with the exception of her giant hammer of course. So that's the all-in-one bodysuit with full length sleeves, foot stirrups and contrast details. The two-tone jester's hat, complete with pom-pom, ruffled wrist cuffs and dicky for the neck, as well as Harley Quinn's distinctive court jester shoes. You'll be up to no good in no time at all. So it may seem like the materials required for your supervillain costume is just a bit of a daunting list really, but I am here for you. All right, so we recommend this active wear matte lycra in red and black for the base of the bodysuit and all of the contrasting um, appliques. For the wrist cuffs and the dicky collar thing going on, you're going to need a fairly weighty board cloth or a cotton. We think this white 100% craft cotton will do the job nicely. It's got some nice structure to it for all of those pleats and ruffles and also give it some body. 
The shoes are made from ballet flats and wool felt, which we have here in red and black. You'll have to provide your own ballet shoes, I'm afraid. However, if you don't wish to sacrifice your favourite pair of comfies, we do have these espadrille soles that will make the perfect kind of base from which to construct your Harlequin jester shoe. For the hat, you're going to need toy stuffing in order to get that really great jester shape going on. And every cute point of the collar, the hat, the shoes are all topped with a cute little fluffy pom-pom so you can look adorable while you're wreaking evil and havoc. And then all you're going to need to complete your outfit is gloves, an eye mask, and an inflatable hammer. Simplicity 8434 is going to set you up nicely for a DC versus Marvel party or any kind of heroes and villains event. If Harley Quinn is a bit too modern for your tastes, perhaps this Regency-inspired dress and jacket from McCall's will suit you more. The sizes range from 6 to 22, which translates to bust measurements 78 to 112 centimetres, divided across two different envelopes. There are two different dress views, either of which would help you blend in with the Bennett sisters. View A features an empire waist trimmed with ribbon, a gently gathered scoop neck and lightly gathered sleeves for a delicate ladylike poof. The skirt is floor length and has an elegant train, suitable for accepting or rejecting the hand of one who owns half of Derbyshire. View B is better suited to daytime wear, with a more exaggerated empire waist and square neckline trimmed with ribbon. The poof sleeve is the same as view A, but also trimmed with extra ribbon. The skirt is a modest below ankle length, a futile defence against mud. View C, the jacket is perhaps most versatile of these three garments and you could easily incorporate it into your everyday wardrobe for a bit of history bounding. The jacket is very cropped to work with the empire waistline of both dresses. It features an adjustable side buckle at the bottom hem an elegant Peter Pan collar and lightly gathered shoulders that form full length sleeves ending in turned up cuffs. Whether you're a fan of Austin, Bronte or the Netflix latest Bridgerton, this pattern will have you covered. You could sew up view A to attend the Jane Austen Ball and Bath or any other kind of Regency event that's going on in your area. I'm sure there's plenty of them. Or, why not recreate Daphne Bridgerton's day dress with this beautiful Liberty London Ross Tanner cotton lawn? I think the combination of the very small blue floral on the sort of light background is very reminiscent of Daphne's signature icy blue. Alternately, Liberty London do have a solids range of the Ross Tanner cotton lawn, and this in sky blue is just as beautiful in my opinion. For the lining we recommend Roseanne Hubble white cotton poplin. Now if you think this is a little bit too simple don't worry in order to elevate this you can use duchess satin for the binding and silk ribbon for all of the beautiful little extra details. Your finished dress is likely to make you the absolute talk of the ton. If Traditional Regency is not your thing, you can always do what Lexi 3643 did and combine the Regency silhouette with a favourite character. So here we have Elsa from Frozen in the style of a Jane Austen costume drama and it's just such an inspired combination. <laughs> it's innovative and beautifully done and goes to show that really the sky is the limit when it comes to costume patterns. They can be used in myriad ways. On the subject of historically accurate Disney characters, Simplicity 8486 is a 1930s reimagining of Snow White's iconic dress. Sizes run from 6 to 22, which translates to a bust measurement of 78 to 112 centimetres. The pattern includes everything except the shoes, so the hat and two-piece suit. The jacket is typical of the 1930s daywear silhouette, with exaggerated shoulders puff sleeves, long line torso and statement collar. It has a gentle peplum which skims the waistline, guided by the split at the lower back. The skirt is also typical in its simple shape, 
ending at the mid calf with a light flare. The bowler style hat is topped with a bow, mimicking the animated Snow White's headband. I think it's safe to say you will be the fairest of them all in this beautiful vintage suit. The real beauty of this pattern is that it's infinitely wearable, whether as a costume or as part of your everyday wardrobe. The only thing that really makes this two-piece suit snow white is the colour story, the, the primary yellow, blue and red. We think that this Lady McElroy Visco Chalet would make an excellent day wear version. There is an absolutely gorgeous range of colours, but we recommend ochre lime white and royal for the snow white colours. Alternatively, for a more luxurious version, we think a uh, Dupion Shantung would make you feel like an absolute princess. Now, as for the chalet, there is a great range of colours, but we recommend mellow yellow, white and royal, again, to recreate Snow White's um, signature colour story. Now, the hat is intended to be made from wool types, so if you have any small scraps of wool lying around, that would be quite nice. However, we recommend our rolls of acrylic, so you can get it to match the um, the colours of the, the suit that you are making. We also recommend these hemline self-cover buttons so that you can perfectly match the buttons to the bow for that perfect coordinated vintage princess look. So really there's no need to wait for someday when you can make your own princess dreams come true today. And now, last but certainly not least, it's the cutest category, the kids. And regardless of whether your babies have two legs or four, Simplicity 1765 has you covered. Your little monsters will fit right in with other creatures of the Jurassic with these brilliant dinosaur costumes. The children's sizes range from ages three to four, five to six and 78, while the dog costumes run from small, medium and large. Views A, B and C all begin with zip-up onesies. View A, the Stegosaurus, features bony plates running down the back of the onesie with applique spots and chest plates. These features are carried through to the claws on the attached slippers and detached gloves, as well as on the separated balaclava style hood. View B is also a stegosaurus with the addition of organza butterfly wings, just in case your little one can't choose between a dinosaur or a butterfly, of course. View C is a triceratops and is constructed in a similar way to views A and B, but all of the 3D detailing is concentrated on the hood, with the bony plates running along the crown and the three horns for which this dinosaur is named for. Views D and E take the form of dog jackets, which are secured underneath your pooch's belly. View D has a triceratops hood, while view E features the stegosaurus's spines all along the entire length of the dog jacket. Okay, I'll admit it, I think these patterns are far too cute just for costumes, but I don't think they're really quite suitable uh, as pyjama alternatives. <laughs> Nevertheless, the pattern calls for lovely, soft, warm and cosy fleece types. So we recommend this forest green polar fleece, but who's to say what colours the dinosaurs were? We have no idea. You could have a pink stegosaurus. Why not? No one can tell you what to do. Parts of this costume are lined, uh, namely the hood. So why not keep it on theme with a multicolour dinosaur printed polycotton? The tails, the spikes, the spines, all of those little claws on the hands and feet, they will require toy stuffing to give them that nice squishy shape. And you'll need felt for some of the appliques. And we recommend this self-adhesive felt in sunflower yellow. Absolutely no need for any extra fancy techniques, just peel it, stick it, off you go. The onesie itself is zipped up with a 45cm closed zip and the hood is attached at the neck with hook and eye tape. All of these fastenings will keep your little monster secure in their costume and really warm and cosy. Seriously, I think these should be pyjamas. From wreaking havoc to keeping the peace, Simplicity 1035 is one for all the little heroes in your life. 
The pattern includes everything to transform them into DC Comics, Supergirl, Batgirl or Wonder Girl. The sizes range from ages 3 to 8 years. All three costumes have as their base a simple long sleeve dress with back zipper and flared skirt. View A, Batgirl, features the distinctive bat-eared hood and eye mask, spiked cuffs and bat-detailed crime-fighting boot covers. There is also a bat-shaped utility belt and, of course, a bat-wing cape. View B, Wonder Girl, includes her Amazonian wrist cuffs, belt and crown, as well as a star-trimmed cape. View C is Supergirl and is perhaps the simplest of the three patterns, but will make your mini hero feel just super anyway. So as with the adult Harley Quinn outfit, you're going to need a few different bits to create your little mini superheroes. You will need some lycra for the dress and we recommend our shiny activewear lycra in black and yellow for Batgirl. You'll also need lining material for the hood and eye mask, such as our square cotton material in black. And quite frankly, the most important part of this outfit, in my humble opinion, is the cape. So we recommend our anti-static lining fabric in black and yellow for maximum swishing. For the bat logo, we once again break out our friend, the self-adhesive yellow felt no more applique here just peel and stick yes and there you go gotham city's latest hero is going to stun you with the power of cute batarangs at the ready the final pattern today is mccall's 7224 which is a multi-sized multi-view tunic and cloak with length hood and neckline variations as well as a number of complementary accessories sizes run from age 2 to 12 so you'll probably use this pattern many times over the course of their childhoods. There are two tunic variations, one with a hood and one without. Both can be tailored to the appropriate length. There are three different capes, one with a hood and tie closure at the neck, one without a hood, and one with a stand collar, which makes me think of the cloak from Marvel's Doctor Strange. These five base patterns can be worked into a number of different costumes, but the pattern provides a bit of guidance with the additional accessories. A pointy hat to uh, create a witch or wizard costume, a cummerbund for the magician, and a little hat and cowl reminiscent of Sherwood Forest's finest. One of my absolute fondest memories uh, from primary school was playing Red Riding Hood in our school play, but I was not any old Red Riding Hood. I was Miss Riding Hood from Roald Dahl's poem, do you know, I think the dress is still hanging around somewhere in my mum's house. It's an heirloom piece waiting for my moment of fame and we'll auction it off or something like that. So um, with my fond memories of Red Riding Hood, it will come as no surprise that my favourite of this pattern is the cute little Red Riding Hood cloak and tunic. So whether they're a more traditional Red Riding Hood or one who's a scourge on all of wolf kind, we have got the fabrics to make this happen. So for the tunic, we recommend our brown gingham printed poly cotton, which also has some really cute, lovely embroidery detail. And I think this makes it very wearable. For Miss Red's hood, which is the shorter version, complete with hood and neck fastening, we recommend this lovely bright red poly cotton. However, for a slightly richer colour story, there is also this lovely wine red colour, so perhaps Miss Red is more sophisticated, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> to finish it all off and uh, get that cute little uh, tie at the neck, we recommend Beresford's Gingham Ribbon, which comes in all of the shades I just mentioned, so you can match, contrast, whatever your heart desires. And there you have it. That's our roundup of our top 10 favourite costume patterns. Hopefully there was something in there to inspire your next make. Or if you've never sewn a costume before, maybe there is something there that will set you on the path at the beginning of your costuming journey. And you know what? Even if you haven't got a costume party to go to, you can still incorporate some of these into your everyday wardrobe because these patterns are really, really versatile. So how about you? What are your favourite costume patterns? Who do you turn to for inspiration? Let us know in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like and hit the follow button. All of the patterns, materials, 
bits and bobs that have been mentioned in this video or are required to make the things in the video have been tagged but if you do have any comments or questions pop them below and we'll get back to you in reply to those and hopefully sort any problems out that you may have. If you haven't already, why not go and make a Minerva profile? It's free and you can get involved with other like-minded makers and sewers. You can share your projects, see what other people are making. Also, if you do so, you'll receive a little discount on your next order. You can also join the Minerva Craft Club and get 10% off all of your orders for the next 12 months. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.